want to especially thank the Django uh, Denmark team for making this trip possible for me. Actually, I'm supposed to make the, uh, present this particular talk uh, together with a colleague, Abigail Misrinami, but unfortunately, she couldn't make it here due to visa issues. Abigail is one of the uh, is the lead for Pilates in Ghana, and she's doing amazing amazing job uh, by uh, encouraging more ladies in Ghana to learn the learn Python and hosting Django Girls Workshop uh, across the country. And uh, since Abigail is not here, she has a message for us, and let's watch this. Yeah. Yes, that for Sound? Yeah? Okay. Can switch machine that will work. My name is Abigail Mishanya Midobe, and I'm a proud member of the Python Software Community in Ghana, and also the lead for PyLadies Ghana. Um, I apologize for not making it to Copenhagen, and I'm excited to be doing this video as well. I want to use this opportunity to say a big thank you to the organizers. They've been so supportive. Elvis, Benjamin, Sarah, I love you so much. I appreciate all the love. And I also hope you enjoy Noah's talk. Greetings from all of us here in Ghana. Bye. Bye. All right, thank you. All. <laughs> thank you, Abiga. Uh, I hope I will make you proud. All right, so who am I? Uh, I'm Noah Lau, and a developer and uh, an individual member of the Django Software Foundation. On Twitter, I'm Plasma Dre and GitHub, Noah Lau, and you can always shoot an email to noahlau at gmail.com. All right, all right, so let's get started. Building a Django community in Africa. The beauty of community is that it connects people. You and I all gathered here are here because of the love we have for Django. And Django, a community, brought us all together. The heart of every community is its members. Without its members, there is no community. Building together makes us stronger. I would like to share a quick story about how it all started and uh, where we are now. There is this particular initiative called Django Girls, and uh, uh, I hope uh, all of you, are, you know about Django Girls. How many of you don't know about Django Girls? All right, so Django Girls Workshop allows, uh, 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 allows people to learn how to program, and it's tailored to, uh, for ladies to learn how to code. So I happened to attend my very first Django Girls in Ghana. That is uh, uh, early 2017 in April. And uh, I was so excited about the ladies interested in learning, uh, learning how to code. So in the course of the training, I realized that there are different categories of people, and uh, some are like following and they are able to build their blog, and some are like, oh, this is not our thing. And some are also looking for A on the keyboard, like they are actually struggling. And I was like, how can I help solve the, the ones that are not having access to this part, or are not following the whole uh, workshop. So I decided to create a tutorial for them so that at their own pace, they, they will be able to uh, build their blog whenever they have time. 
And then another workshop, uh, there is another call for coaches to uh, mentor at another Django Girls event. And this particular workshop, the same in Ghana, that is the, actually the second workshop in Ghana. And this workshop is hosted by Nigerians, no, not Ghanaians. And I was like, why would someone travel all the way from Nigeria just to come and host Django Girls event? All this has been done because of the love of the community. And we were like, okay, what can we do again? There's another issue because all these workshops are being held in the cities, but not in the rural areas. So I and a, a friend or a colleague called Manny, uh, we deci decided to host uh, our very first Django Girls workshop, and that was held in Ho, in the Vota region of Ghana. Uh, during uh, that particular uh, workshop, uh, and uh, we decided to, um, we were uh, discussing about how we can have a community that can see to all these things. So uh, that particular Django Girls workshop leads to the formation of Python Software Community in Ghana. And last year we, we hosted our very first PyCon, and this year we'll be hosting PyCon Africa. I'll, I'll, I'll talk about that later. So looking at this particular map, uh, uh, map of Africa, this, this represents the coverage of a workshop being hosted in, uh, in Africa, Django Girls Workshop. What you are saying is, in the, in the years to come, uh, uh, focusing this one year, we should see that all this workshop will, 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 will replicate or will fill the whole Africa. And what this map is also telling us is that we have developers in Africa that are making use of the Django framework and uh, Python. And uh, the reason why they are attending this workshop is to connect with other developers, learn, share, network, and collaborate, aside uh, teaching their ladies. Do we have a community that brings all these developers together? No. This is a picture of I and Resfordon Cancer, also a developer, Django developer. We went on a round trip with a motorcycle to attend one of the Django Girls workshop in the northern part of Ghana, approximately 1.7 thousand kilometers. And uh, when we went there, we met a young lady, 11 years old, so it's very rare in Africa to see kids coding, actually. So we, we had this encounter with the lady. They are so excited that Anytime people see me, uh, they were like, uh, Django lady or Django man or whatever they've been calling me. Uh, so this, this, uh, this shows the love we have for the community or we want to give back to, uh, give back to our society. My colleague Abigail and I conducted a survey recently and we asked if uh, they would like to have a community in their cities. And we had uh, responses, we, we received uh, responses from Ghana, Mozambique, Nigeria, Rwanda, South Africa, Uganda, Zimbabwe, and the rest. And 96% uh, are interested. 96% uh, uh, says they are interested in having a city, uh, a community in their uh, city. And then we have 4.0, which are in 50/50, if they would like to have or they, will, they are not interested. And we we had zero for no. <laughs> so what does that mean? It means that having a, co a community in Africa will, aid it, will, will provide an opportunity for developers to contribute to the, uh, uh, to the Django framework. We are not going to be just uh, users of the framework, but we will also be contributing to uh, the framework. Aside that, Django supports 10 languages for now, and uh, uh, with the help of a community in Africa, it will aid in the indigenous contribute to their language, uh, to uh, contributing to their local language or translating the documentation of Django to their local languages. Tutorials will also be written in their local languages, whereby they can uh, developers in that particular area. Based on our survey, they were like, they, 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 uh, some of the African countries can uh, like. And uh, the languages that they speak, the, the documentation doesn't uh, have that particular language for them. So they find it very difficult to make use of the, uh, this amazing oops, uh, this amazing uh, framework. 
So this will provide a platform for them to uh, uh, make tutorials in these. Aside that, it's also uh, having a community will provide us, uh, like we will be able to host workshops and trainings to learn more about the Django framework, new, new updates and everything contribute as well. And uh, this will also create an awareness uh, for us to uh, create an awareness with workshop, etc. A lot of people heard about the Django con in uh, Europe, on Twitter, etc. Having a workshop, uh, for instance, in, uh, for instance, we also will aid in promoting the Django framework in Africa. Aside that, it's going to also strengthen the relationship between Django developers. It will bring all, develop, uh, all developers in Africa to meet and then network. So what's next? Later this year, we'll be hosting our very first Django Summit or Congress. And uh, after the Congress, in 2020, we are, we are going to host the very first uh, Django Con Africa. <laughs> and we can't wait to see you uh, come and experience Django Con Africa for the first time. And we have a team dedicated working tirelessly to actually make this happen in 2020. So when the time is due, we will actually communicate it and I also post on the uh, Slack channel. So let's do this for the love of the community. I would like to specially thank, uh, special thanks to all people who made this conference a reality. You are all super amazing. Yeah, thank you. And if you have any question, you can yeah, ask me. Thank you. I'm super excited to gonna go to Django Con Africa next year. So, who else is? Woo! Okay, are there any questions? There's... There is. There's a Russell. I'm really excited to find out about Django Con Africa. I hope I manage to get there one day. Um, I would like to know your thoughts about or what you have done, any, any advice you have about building a community in a, an area as large as Africa. Um, you, I, you have, I'm guessing, language issues in some cases, uh, you know, different, different cultures, different uh, uh, national boundaries you're dealing with. Australia is big and we have difficulty pulling together a national Python community and a national Django community. Do you have any tips for how, uh, for how you have been able to pull it together, even though you've got the additional barriers of languages and cultures? And yeah, all right, so if I get you right, uh, with regards to that, what you, we plan of doing is to have different, different meetups at different, different uh, countries, and, uh, and then later on we all come together and uh, host the, uh, have a, a successful uh, conference or meetup, yeah. Okay, <laughs> so glad to hear you talk. This was so great um, and meeting you in person. Um, so my question is very similar to Russell's of, with, um, with, uh, with PyCon Africa um, coming up um, in August um, and things like that. Um, how, what resources are you, uh, are you util utilizing mostly and how can we help and participate and when call for proposals come out, where should we be listening? All right, so we will be creating Twitter uh, channel and also be uh, posting on the mailing list. Uh, yeah, mailing list. So we will actually broadcast all those information. So with regards to the way that you can, uh, are possible ways of helping us, uh, we, uh, if you mean PyCon Africa. Uh, all of the above. All right, so uh, for PyCon Africa, we've actually uh, opened call for proposal. And you can find that uh, on a paper. I can actually show that if you want. Uh, yeah, a minute. Yeah, yeah. Can we get the slides up again, please? Okay. 
All right, so PyCon Africa will be in on the 6th to 10th August in Accra, Ghana. And uh, what to expect, workshop, talks, sprint, and community. Uh, our call for proposal is open till 1st June, and you can submit your proposal uh, to this particular uh, link, papercore.io slash PyConAfrica. And uh, we also, if you want to sponsor us, uh, here is the link to see our sponsorship packages that we have. And now, uh, if you want to connect with us, uh, here are our handles on Twitter at PyCon Africa, uh, Facebook, PyCon Africa, and you can join our Slack channel to get to know people that are traveling to Ghana to experience their very first PyCon Africa. So, yeah. Hi, thanks Hi. for the talk, very inspiring. Uh, I'd like to know more about uh, those the fin financial and structural uh, needs like we, I, I think we probably face the same problems in Brazil uh, as you face there. We have like a huge territory and we make a huge effort to bring not only gender diversity but also social diversity. Uh, and the main problem we have normally is financing all those events because you have to bring tutors, you have uh, all of structural things to like come up with, uh, how do, do you have a like special way of providing that mm. or just like going to uh, companies and asking for sponsors? All right, so with regards to funding of our event, uh, it's very difficult in, to be sincere, it's very difficult to get uh, sponsorship from our local companies. So we rely on international organizations. So Mostly, when you take a look at all the Django Girls workshop held in Ghana or other parts of uh, Africa, I realize that uh, the majority goes to like the funding or that we get are from international organizations. Without that particular support, I don't think we'll be able to uh, make uh, or host those particular workshops. So we rely uh, on the international organizations. We hope the local companies will actually come on board to support us. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks. Hi, uh, thanks for the talk. Uh, I would like to ask what's the most difficult thing that you faced in building a community? Because coding is not something that everything, everyone is passionate about, so uh, how do you kindle that interest in people? All right, so um, I, I, I forgot to share this. So when we hosted uh, th this particular Django Girls workshops, uh, we have midwives that got like, when they, they first encountered this particular uh, code, coding, they were like, wow, I think I can do this part-time. And then, yeah, they actually learn how to code now, and uh, they are uh, also giving back to uh, society. We have nurses, chemical engineers who don't have anything to uh, do with computing, they, yet, yet they are able to experience this and uh, also co uh, giving back to the society, yeah. So, uh, with people who don't have interest or people who don't have the necessary mean of learning, so we will have a meetup that we can enlighten more people about um, coding, what they can do with it. So I think that is how we will be able to draw them to this particular uh, community. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, Noah. Yeah. Um, I wonder if you could say something about, uh, for the potential travelers too, a PyCon Africa or a, a other events in, in Africa because um, many of us, we travel very happily within Europe or between Europe and, and the US and we're in familiar territory, speaking languages we know, using currency we know, uh, in cities we are maybe familiar with already. But for many people traveling to Accra, for example, it'll be a brand new experience. And I wondered, firstly, if you would have any advice for the potential traveler? And secondly, if you have any plans to help those travelers who are coming from very different places and cultures and countries when they, when they arrive to orient them? Okay, so uh, Accra, or Ghana is very peaceful and very friendly. Uh, for we welcome every, every, every anybody to Ghana. Um, with regards to uh, yeah, so uh, 
it's, it's a very peaceful area that you don't have to worry about your, nobody will just attack you on the way or uh, do anything to you. Uh, the, the indigenous are very, very friendly. You can go to the market, chat, and uh, almost all of them will speak English to you. And uh, touring Ghana, we have a lot of uh, tourist sites that you can visit. And trust me, if you happen to make it to Accra, Ghana, we, you have uh, an interesting, uh, a wonderful time in Accra. We have a, uh, a particular day dedicated for touring Ghana that we will send you to experience uh, the way of life in Ghana, and also there will be festivals and uh, some other uh, programs that will be go going on in uh, Ghana that we plan of uh, bringing our international travelers to come and experience. So Accra is very welcoming. Your safety is assured. Yeah, thank you. <laughs>